Okay, I went ahead and I uh, put this pipe on here. This face is uh, down, of course, and uh, I've uh, given it a good tighten there, and that's a big one, too. That's an inch and an eighth. So uh, we've got our oil pipe. These go to your uh, demister and your heater. Okay, I'm going to put this uh, power steering uh, pump on here now. I don't have the lid on it, but uh, this sucker goes in there. And it goes in there. Okay, got it right. Then it gets a, a flat standard washer. And I just, it gets a lock washer, and then it gets a nut on the top. And then on the bottom, yeah, that was a standard washer, a lock washer, and a nut. And this is an extra thick washer here, and it goes down at the bottom right on that pin. And that's uh, actually a stud. And then it gets a half inch uh, nut on it. And then that is adjustable back and forth there to adjust the, it pivots like that to adjust it, to tighten up the belt on it. I don't have the sprocket on it or the pulley yet, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the top on now. Okay, this has got a, that rubber piece I put in the top there, so I just want to snug that down until the rubber gets uh, starts to squoosh out there. So you don't want to over tighten it. Okay, before I put these uh, heads on, uh, I take a piece of paper, and this is emery cloth. And by the way, that's how you uh, get a strip off a piece of emery cloth. You just tear it. You didn't know that. I take a file and put it on the file and then I flatten these surfaces. I kind of hold it between my legs and then I get on these surfaces and I go at them like that until I get a good flat surface. And I do that on all four sides and I do it on this side too before I put them on. It makes for a better seal. Okay, what we got here is we've got these uh, copper, they've got a layer in there. These are uh, Rolls Royce ones, but uh, you can get these aftermarket from a couple of places. Uh, I think replacement parts have them. Of course, they go on here, I put a couple on, but they get an acoustic seal, and it is a 35959, and I got that from Napa. That was stuff recommended by Larry DeRocher, and I'm going to put some gloves on so I don't make a mess out of my hands. But I'm going to go ahead and put some on and then slide these on, on there and get the exhaust manifold on. Okay, you can see I put sealant on that side too. There is an A bank and a B bank, and the A bank has the uh, heat riser on it. But basically, you just get that thing started on there, and usually it goes on pretty easily if you get it straight. Sort of like so. And then I'm going to get the uh, nuts here. And you can see uh, some people. Well, I got two guys that are experts in the club, and they haven't come to a resolution on it. Uh, brass nuts, uh, one guy says is what should be on there, the brass colored. I personally think there's nothing brass on the engine, and I'm told by uh, one of the real experts around the club that, uh, you know, some of them were cad bladed, and I like the cad bladed ones better, so I'm going to put those on. One other thing here is I put these nuts on here. You can see there's a standard washer that goes on them, and I forgot to mention that in the video, but that's a very important part of this. Okay, I hope you can see this, but what I do is I start tightening these metal ones, and I snug them up real good. I go from the inside to the outside. And I've already snugged those up, but uh, just about everything, heads and all that, you go from the inside to the outside. 
These will, when the thing heats up, uh, you will have to tighten them one or two times. Uh, they will uh, get a little loose on you as the uh, thing gets hot. I'm going to have to get a different uh, wrench for that one. missing one stud here but I'm going to put it in later and the reason I put this on was as I put it into the uh, frame of the car over here uh, I put the uh, power steering on it. That manifold over here on the power steering you'll see these hoses here and these hoses get real close to that manifold and it's hard to slip in there over those studs so I put that side on before I'm going to lift it in the car. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're setting the engine up to put the distributor in. We need to know at what what uh, cylinder is firing. So we turn the engine over and we watch the exhaust valve open and then uh, come up to the point that these two valves are on the rock. Uh, we look in inside the distributor housing. We see that the uh, drive is facing forwards so that we know that we're going to be firing on B2 because that's the opposing cylinder to A1, this one being A1. So we will we'll have the distributor in and the rotor pointed towards the firewall which will tell us um, where we need to be. Even are the lines marked up on the flywheel? Yep, the, uh, the TDC mark on the flywheel is in a line as well so that we know that, that we're at TDC. Go ahead. So we're going to put the distributor in. Um, we've uh, put our drive so that it's straight forwards. We know that we're firing on the opposite cylinder to A1 because we had the valves on the rock. So we're going to drop this down <clears throat> like so. Now we have to make sure that the uh, this uh, piece you see there, you can get it so it's not in, so you've got to make sure you get right in there. We've got the rotor to the back, the uh, vacuum unit there, and we're going to just nip that up for now. So we're putting our special bolt, we've got a bolt with a square headed nut, which supposedly makes it easier to adjust the timing when you need to. Um, Had platings a bit thick, but we're uh, we're making it. Go. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to have a look and set this in place so that when we come to start up time, is uh, so we're going to get this contact here just breaking. So we're going to turn the distributor okay so when you've got a cap that has got nothing in it and no direction you need to decide where number one is. As I explained we're firing on the opposite B2 and num number one A1 is going to be over here so what we need to do is to, to de what we need to do is determine where our A1 lead goes because we need to have a starting point. So you can see here this is uh, B2, B2 is here, so A1 is going to be here which is just past the clip. So this is going to be A1 right here. Okay I've got my carburetors here. You can see there's pins on these so it's keyed and uh, 
I'm going to put a little uh, gasket shellac on this, but uh, this is the gasket for it. And it's held on simply with one bolt, one long bolt, right through the metal. So anyway, uh, let me move on over to the car here. And uh, you'll see that there's holes in here, so it's definitely keyed. And uh, we'll uh, go ahead and put that carburetor on. I wish I had another old carburetor I could rebuild. I don't think I did a video on rebuilding the carburetor. So uh, I've got three of them and I've rebuilt them all. So uh, maybe I'll get another one someday and do that as a video. Okay, uh, I got my gasket slack on there. I'll show you that in a minute, but I got my gasket on there, and that only goes on one way. It's like a, got a left and a right to it, so uh, you got to make sure you get it on the right way. And the linkage goes behind, so this sets down in there, right like that, and it goes down in those pins. And simply you get the bolt here, and it does have a washer on top of it. And that isn't an aluminum washer, that's just a normal washer. And we'll go ahead and tighten that on down, that's a half inch. Okay, I think you can see the bolt there. And uh, that is a uh, Newton U-bolt. It's a long one, and that simply gets tightened down in there. And you don't have to over tighten it, so uh, there you go. When you put it on, you want to make sure you get your linkage loose and don't get it caught up under here because you won't be able to get to it. I've went ahead and on each flapper in there, you got to loosen this linkage here, and while you got it off, you got to make sure they open and close at the same time. You can also adjust that a uh, little bit with some gauges, and when we uh, start it up, we will adjust them and show you how to do that with the uh, gauges on top. Okay, what I'm working on here is the uh, pipes that go into the carburetors or fuel overflow and fuel uh, into the things and you can see here there's two brackets the hold there's a bigger one on the pipe the outside pipe and the inside pipe is a smaller one and I went ahead and got that started on there but I left it so I can move the pipes around a little bit when I get it on the car but uh, basically that goes like that and uh, there's a big thick headed screw that goes on there it's a straight head screw and there's a square nut that goes on that side and you got to tight that down because that's uh, grounding on the uh, coil and that coil sets right here and uh, there's not a lot of room so uh, when you mount this onto the uh, carburetor manifold so uh, I put the screw up from the bottom and it happens to be a Newton U screw on this and uh, it is a beveled machine, what I call a machined washer and I'm going to put that on there and you can see there's a bevel to these washers. I start them from the bottom. Now on a cloud uh, two there's actually a uh, Big, I'll show it to you here in a second, but there's a big screw. Let's get both of those started. And I don't know if there's a right or a wrong position on these, but uh, basically they're a 7 16 Get that one snugged up. I need a wrench to do that with. I'm going to give you a close up on these clamps. The little pipe is on the inside, 
The big clamp is on the outside. Uh, Ralph had them on my other uh, car. He had them both on the inside, but that's how these came off, and I'm pretty sure it was never off before. So, uh, And that's the way it came off my Cloud 2, too. I don't know that it makes a difference, but that's how I put them on, and that's a good look at them from the bottom side. I've got it flipped over. Okay, I got my wrench, uh, 7 sixteenths, and I don't want that hanging over the edge, so I'm going to get it there, kind of centered, try that. And I'll get this one snugged up. Yeah, you got to kind of be careful. If you get this too far back, it can hit the linkage uh, on the carburetor. So uh, that's that. And uh, this is the bolt that comes off a of cloud too. And I highly recommend re replacing it with the uh, bolts like on a cloud three. But it's uh, what I'd call a wood screw. But I guess that was to make sure you got this grounded. But on a cloud three, they changed that. Uh, in back, as I put it on the car, I've got two Newton U's, and it's also got a beveled washer on it. And you get one in there and one in here. And I leave this all loose because you may have to bend the pipes and stuff a little bit and give yourself a little leeway as you put it on the car. So I'm going to uh, check and get this mounted on the car, and then I'm going to check and maybe bend those a little bit to make it fit. Okay, I'm doing this freehand with the camera, but you'll see this will line up there. These go on the top. Okay, they go underneath here, so you got to slip them underneath. Okay, my nuts under there for that. I'll slip that on around. Okay, as you come over here, you can see that is my connection. I got my two screws started there with my uh, bolt started. Newton U with uh, the bevel washers. Uh, right here, you got to be careful. That's notched out on the bracket for that. But uh, if you get the uh, coil too far over, this will set on top of this. So you got to be careful right there. And I'm going to move on over to the other side here. And uh, right here you'll see this one will go on top as such. you got to be careful to get this top one at the bottom. It has to come underneath this one. So if you get everything, you can get it all kind of in there and... And if you don't have it underneath, it's not going to work out for you. And then, of course, this top one here will go in here uh, with that nut. And uh, just to kind of complete things, you come over here, and I'm going to connect my fuel hose, okay, that comes down from the bottom there. But I'm going to connect my fuse hole my flexible fuel line right here and then I'm going to connect this one right here and that's your fuel feed in and this is your overflow uh, out so uh, if you should get such a thing and uh, that's basically the setup I might mention uh, when you put your uh, when you put that on I don't know if you can see Lucas is at the bottom and I put the SW on this side, and that seems to work out better with all the wiring. So uh, I think if you don't want your wires crossed, that's the way to set it up on there. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, and I've left these loose over here, but I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two down because that has to be rigid. And then I'm going to put my bolt that holds the top of the fuel uh, bypass. If you get too much fuel in there, that uh, will let it out. There is an aluminum washer on top, 
then there's a fiber washer on the bottom that lets this breathe. Same on this side, so uh, aluminum on top, on the bottom underneath, you get this fiber washer. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two down. Uh, I'm going to get a wrench to do that. So, uh, okay, I got my wrenches, so uh, got to walk around the front of the car there, but uh, Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. Like so. And then on the inside one, uh, you have to use a wrench that will fit up underneath there, but I'm going to tighten that one. I'd already snugged it down. The next thing I'm going to do is tighten this uh, coil down, and I like to get it where I can get to both wrench it or get a wrench going in the top on both sides. And so I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. I don't know your spark cord wires might be in the way. Tighten that side down. Then I'm going to come over to the other side and tighten the other one down. Now to do the final tightening on this bolt, I've got this wrench which I cut down actually to take the wood panels uh, to tighten the uh, draw handles on the top pieces of the wood on the door but it's thinner, so you need a thinner one underneath there. And uh, that will hold that. Let me get my other one. And that way I can tighten it real good. like that. Uh, that one's tough to get to. Uh, if you use a full width uh, wrench, it's hard to get underneath there. So I uh, ground that one down and uh, it worked. Okay, there's the aluminum washer I was talking about. It goes on these specialty nuts and uh, it's going to go on the top here, but we got to get that fiber washer in there. Oh. Gotta make sure you keep that, hold that on there as it goes down, and you gotta make sure you get it in the fiber washer. So I'm gonna get that one started, and then I'm gonna go over and get the other side started with the same two uh, metal washers, aluminum washer and fiber washer. Okay, now I'm going to take this one here and I'm going to snug it down. I just don't want to bend that shaft in there. I tighten it enough, not all the way down, but I tighten it enough so I can still move the uh, top. And that one uh, looks good. And uh, next I'll put these on. I'm going to start with the far side and then work this one on. Okay, I've got this one started on this side, so I'm going to go ahead. I put that on there. I moved it around and bent it a little bit, so it's going almost straight on there. Like so. And like so. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these two tops down, and... Uh, that should uh, 
firm everything up, you'll notice there's a green washer under here. I didn't mention that. In our tune-up video, we talk about using a half inch to set your float level, and with modern fuels, a half inch is recommended. I think nine sixteenths a lot of people say, but uh, I think the book says that. But uh, Ralph recommends a half inch with the new fuels on the float. Now these top here, I find that a 9 16 is a little sloppy on them. They're SU carbs, so I think it's a 14 millimeter, and that's what I'm using. And you don't want to over tighten those, but I'm going to go ahead and tighten both of those top ones down. like so. Then I'm going to tighten these two down. Okay, uh, I got the fuel line started on there. And then I'm simply going to tighten that. Take some relatively big wrenches, but uh, you got to hold it on one end or it'll tend to twist everything. So uh, there you go. Okay, I'm getting ready to put the uh, generator on. Uh, I tapped that in, but uh, anyway, you got coarse threads on this side and fine on this side, so you got to kind of watch which way you put this in, and this goes in from this direction. And I'm going to get a wrench and crank that on. Anyway, I'm going to crank that on down, and then this end will go through the bracket, and it gets a rather thick washer, a lock washer, and then a standard nut. Okay, I've got all these brackets on here like they go, and I've got them all loose so I can move them around, and uh, the back, when I put a rag under here, so when I set it down there, I don't scratch the heck out of everything. And uh, as I set this on there, I want to get it through the hole in the, there. And then I want to get this front one in. And the front one is a longer bolt. It's a T-bolt. It's got a regular washer and a lock washer on it. And this back one has a nut on it, so you get it through, through here, get it through the bracket, get it onto the, get it onto the nut. I'm going to get that started a little ways. Okay, like that. Then the shorter one goes here in the back. I may have to go to the other side to get that. I put the cloth on there also just from the uh, aspect. There she went through. Just from the aspect that. Uh, if I drop something, I'll be able to get it. In other words, if a nut falls on there. Now, uh, the back side of the one on this side gets this big thick washer. And it gets a lock washer and a nut. And I'm going to make sure I got the machine side out. Okay, so that side, now I'm going to have to go around there and get to the other side. Okay, I don't know if you can see the back of that generator or not, but uh, I went ahead and put my bolt in. I do it from this side because it's easier to get to. I put a bolt on it, then I put a washer on it, then I put a lock washer on it, and uh, 
tighten it that down there. And I snugged all of these up. Let me double check them. And we're good. So uh, I did not put the wires on the back. I usually do that before I put it in because it's a bear to get to that lower terminal. But uh, I went ahead and put it on there anyway. I'll uh, make do with it when I uh, get the belts and such and figure out where it goes. But uh, that's basically how the uh, generator goes on there. A lot of people say these generators don't have enough power for a car. Uh, this has in heater box air conditioning and uh, it's got the bracket over here and I, it was an old York compressor. I am going to put a modern compressor but it's actually got hidden in dash air conditioning uh, from Rolls Royce that comes through the dash all out of the heater box. So. Uh, Anyway, uh, I'm going to put the belts on it later, but uh, I'm all set up there for the belts. I don't have a pulley on my power steering. Ralph owes me that pulley. He was getting me one of them. Okay, I'm working on my oil filter today, and it's got a bunch of parts. But what I'm doing before I uh, put everything together here is I'm putting a little bit of grease on these uh, O-rings and gaskets it helps them to slip so they don't get cut. I already stuck that cup in there. A lot of people lose that cup. It sticks on there and you either they used to make a cork seal on these now you get this nice rubber seal but uh, this cup here uh, people tend to have it stuck on the bottom of the thing and they throw it away when they get the old filter so you want to make sure you get that uh, properly in place and uh, we'll show you where it goes here in a second but uh, I'm getting this uh, and this one is the one that goes at the top and we'll show you in a second but it's very important to get this thing in straight because if you don't it uh, it's going to be under the car, so you're not going to be able to see it real well, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to clean my hands up a little bit, and then we'll put the rest of that. Okay, the first thing that goes on the uh, bolt, and I tapped this because I had it uh, plated, and you'd want it to go in easy, but the first thing that goes on is this what they call a dowdy washer. It's got a rubber ring on the inside and you want to make sure you don't damage that as you put it over the threads. And then it goes through the actual uh, retainer there, the cup. And then you're going to get a, uh, another rubber washer. And that one goes on a little snug. I got that going down and then it gets a metal washer and that's kind of a specialty washer and that goes on down and uh, then what you're going to have is you're going to have the spring and this cup goes in the spring and the hat goes through to the top of the car like such and this spring fits on there and that all goes on okay so we got that all in there and uh, then the oil filter goes on this is a uh, crossland four three four five as you can see and i use that to shove everything down into position and then we'll be ready to put it on the car. Now on most kits, since this uh, fits the later model cars also, but they take a big old ring. I guess they've got a bigger uh, holder. So you want to take the smaller one, and I'm going to put that up into the uh, holder on the car. Uh, there's a ring in there. I don't know. I'm going to be under the car. We'll see if we can get a good picture of it. And Boy, you want to make sure you get that in straight. And you can over tighten them where the lip of this is kind of sharp. 
well it's not much of a lip so it'll cut into these so you don't want to over tighten them but then again I seem to always get them loose and have to go and snug them up after I start the engine and check it but uh, don't over tighten them you can always tighten them. Okay now on the other end of this sometimes this on the Rolls Royce when this rubber uh, on the far end of that that gets uh, that particular piece there comes as a separate piece and you have to put it on on these crossland filters it seems to come on them and I'm gonna put a little bit of grease on that but that's ready to go up in there now okay this is uh, the holder for the oil filter you'll see uh, it's got this ring around it here and uh, we'll go ahead and put that o-ring in there i'm gonna have a hard time holding the camera and doing it so i'll show you after i get it okay you can see i've got this o-ring up there and got it in properly you'll also note that the steering bars if you're underneath here you need to have it all the way turned to the left or you won't be able to get this in so at this point i'm going to work the cup up in there and uh, i'll show you after i get it Okay, so I've got the oil filter up in there and started and I'm probably going to cover the camera up as I do this But you want to make sure you get this lined up as you go in and I like to hold the oil filter in place And then snug it up That way it doesn't move around on you because it'll twist otherwise with all the rubber and such in there I mean the grease helps but uh, okay right there because if you don't hold that filter down what happens is it spins and it cuts into that rubber I think that's good and tight, so there we go. Okay, I'm getting ready to put the oil dipstick rod in, and basically uh, that gets around kind of an oval washer. Uh, two, uh, I call them machine heads, T-heads, they have a T on the top of them, standard washers. There's a shorter uh, bolt that goes up at the top, and uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put some ultra black on that and then we'll uh, go ahead and get that in the car that goes on the left side of the engine and uh, I like to put this goo on here. Uh, Goo on both sides and get it all over there real good. I hate to have oil leaks. So uh, anyway, that goes on there, and uh, I'll uh, take that over to the engine and we'll put that in the engine. Okay, you can see I've got the gasket in down here and I've got them uh, tightened up. And up here at the top, you can see there's a bracket that uh, goes right in there to the block. And there's a hole in the block to put that front support up there. So we've got the oil uh, dipstick on, and I'm going to put the dipstick in.